Welcome. Welcome one and all to Howl Oween. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Barky, I can hear you say. What do gorillas have to do with Halloween? Well, we're not talking about friendly gorillas like the Great Grape Ape or Clyde from Every Which Way But Loose, who was an orangutan. Nor are we talking about the gorilla that hung around with the Ghostbusters. No, we're talking about gorillas that kill, killer gorillas, if you will. Most of these involve old dark houses with secret passages and stormy nights and all of that, which is a genre in and of itself. There's usually a mystery of one kind or another, a young couple in love, people getting bumped off, you name it. But the kind of movie we're talking about has all of that, but it throws a gorilla into the mix who goes around killing people. First, we have the Monster Walks from 1932. In this one, a killer gorilla is locked up in the basement of a spooky old mansion, and he's raising a fuss. He's very annoying. The patriarch and owner of said gorilla has just croaked it, which has upset the gorilla. And it also means a gathering of heirs on a dark and stormy night. Murders and aply mayhem and so. There aren't too many name brands in this one. Misha Auer may be familiar. Ironically, the best known actor here is probably the one guy with the smallest part. Supporting actor Willie Best, also known as Sleep and Eat. Here, he has a fairly small role as a chronically slow and frightened chauffeur. He was a real comic talent, but sadly, these kind of roles were often all he got to play. And then he got cancelled during the civil rights era for playing them. This despite the fact Best often convinced directors to pare down some of the worst, most offensive elements the scripts gave his characters. That's a shame, because the poor guy got screwed both ways, and he was truly gifted. Frank Strayer directs, and he made The Vampire Bat, also from 1932, which stars Faye Ray, Dwight Fry, and Lionel Atwell. I talked about that one a couple of Halloweens ago. Anyway, the Monster Walks was a bit dry, but it does have some interesting elements. This was an early horror thriller made on a very scanty budget. It's all right if you like the old dark house genre and is probably worth seeing at least once. Next, we have The House of Mystery from 1934. This one has George Gabby Hayes. <laughs> this is another old dark house movie, and yes, it also sports a killer gorilla. Our story starts in the Orient, where the leader of an archaeology expedition decides he'd rather grab treasure. He kills a monkey, and that makes the natives mad on account of they belong to a monkey cult. Their high priest predicts this guy will suffer the terrible curse of Kali. I know it should be Kali, but that's how they pronounce this in the movie. Anyway, they sick a killer gorilla on the guy, but he escapes with the help of a sacred dancer he seduced. And off they flee with the temple treasure. Flash forward 20 years and the investors in the expedition finally catch up with this crook and demand their share of the treasure. He's an invalid now and says the treasure has a curse on it. While staying in the crook's old dark house, a killer gorilla stalks victims, cutting down the number of rightful heirs to the treasure one by one whenever Tom Toms play. 
There's a battle axe and her henpecked husband, their lawyer, a hypochondriac spinster and her companion, a business dude who owes a gambling debt, and this insurance salesman who finds a different kind of treasure in the arms of the crook's innocent nurse. Well, and he and some not-so-competent detectives try to solve the case. This one is kind of fun, and it has a beardless Gabby Hayes. <laughs> Verna Haley plays the nurse. Sadly, her career was cut short due to a nerve ailment. She's very good here. She appeared with John Wayne in The Star Packer and The Trail Beyond. She has a bit part in Duck Soup with the Marx Brothers and starred in Man of the Forest with Randolph Scott. Then we have The Ape from 1940, which stars Boris Karloff. He plays a nice scientist who kills people. Why? Because he's trying to help a cute chick in a wheelchair. He hopes to concoct enough serum from murder victims and a gorilla to inject into her spine and bring about a cure so she can walk again. There's a gorilla, of course, going around murdering people. This one has a twist ending you probably won't see coming. It's all right, not a bad picture as these things go, and Karloff is always a treat to watch. Then there's 1943's The Ape Man, another weird one. Here, Bella Lugosi is a scientist who's been injected with a serum that turns him into a half-ape. Basically, it gives him mutton chops and makes him hunch over. <laughs> He needs uh, to make some more serum to cure himself, but that means, you guessed it, murdering people, gorilla style. This also stars Louise Curry, who is in the Republic serial The Adventures of Captain Marvel. That's really good. Here, she's a news photographer. Ironically, she was one of the last surviving members of the cast of Citizen Kane, in which she played a bit part as a news reporter. Anyway, this movie has a sequel called Return of the Ape Man from 1944, which has nothing to do with the first movie, or apes, or gorillas, although it does star Bela Lugosi. But my favorite killer gorilla movie will always be this one, The Gorilla from 1939. This one also stars Lionel Atwell. I always loved this guy. He was a great villain and appeared in a lot of horror pictures, one of which being The Gorilla. In this one, Atwell is a man threatened by a mysterious killer known as The Gorilla, who kills people to death and leaves gorilla-themed calling cards. Instead of the police, Atwell calls in a team of bumbling private detectives played by the Ritz Brothers. Back in the day, I got this movie on a VHS tape from The Bargain Bin, and it was the first time I'd ever seen these guys. The Ritz Brothers were a vaudeville act who eventually parlayed their success into movies. They were sort of a cross between the Marx Brothers, though not nearly as zany, and the Three Stooges, though not nearly as slapstick. They never really hit the heights of the other guys, but they're really good in The Gorilla. It's one of their best outings. We also have Bella Lugosi as Atwill's creepy butler and Patsy Kelly as Atwill's maid. She's a hoot. They're both great in this. Anita Louise rounds things out as Atwill's niece and heir to a fortune. Anita was one of the actresses vetted for the role of Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind, but that wound up going to Vivian Leigh. Alan Dwan directed The Gorilla. He was a true pioneer of the silent era and worked with Gloria Swanson, Douglas Fairbanks, and Mary Pickford. In his 50-year career, he directed films like The River's Edge with Ray Milland, Hold Back the Night, Cattle Queen of Montana with Barbara Stanwyck and Ronald Reagan, the 1939 version of The Three Musketeers, he directed Shirley Temple in Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm and Heidi, and he helmed the John Wayne classic, The Sands of Iwo Jima. So it's no wonder why this picture looks as good as it does. The Gorilla is the perfect blend of the old dark house genre and the killer gorilla genre. 
It's a good little mystery. You've got Patsy Kelly and Bella Lugosi, Atwell, and the Ritz Brothers. It's a lot of fun, so be sure to check it out. So there you go. Keller Gorillas. They're a thing. Who knew? So don't let a gorilla get you. And be sure to join me next time for more Howl Away.